Welcome to the Myeloma University module titled Treatments for Multiple Myeloma Part 1. My name is Beth Feynman and I am a nurse practitioner at the Tostig Cancer Institute in Cleveland, Ohio. In this short discussion, we will review three classes of drugs used to treat multiple myeloma, which includes glucocorticosteroids, immunomodulatory drugs, and proteasome inhibitors. Now let's begin. Glucocorticosteroid hormones or corticosteroids or more commonly referred to simply as steroids, is the first topic. Glucocorticoid steroids hormones are released by the adrenal cortex in response to physical and emotional insults such as anxiety, pain, and inflammation. Corticosteroids such as dexamethasone, prednisone, and methylprednisolone form the backbone of treatment for multiple myeloma and are in just about every regimen available. It is not clear how steroids work in patients with myeloma, but it is thought to be because steroids block IL-6 activity. IL or interleukin-6 is a cytokine growth factor for myeloma cells. Steroids are given either orally or intravenously to treat patients with multiple myeloma to prevent myeloma cell growth. In the elderly population or those who are more frail, dose reductions are recommended. Nurses should be aware that steroids will affect nearly every body system. Common side effects include irritability and mood swings, difficulty sleeping, and fatigue. Patients will experience often a boost in energy levels in the first 48 hours. It is also within the first 48 hours that side effects such as stomach bloating and hiccups can occur. To manage steroid side effects, steroids should be taken at a consistent schedule, either the morning or the evening, they should be taken with food and over-the-counter prescription medication can be recommended to lessen stomach side effects. Some practitioners will recommend antibiotic or antiviral prophylaxis for those who receive high doses of steroids for long term. It is important to remind patients that steroids help kill myeloma cells but can lead to adrenal insufficiency. As I mentioned, the adrenal cortex can become reliant on external steroids. Life-threatening hypotension and excessive fatigue are signs of adrenal insufficiency. Patients should absolutely not adjust or alter their dose of steroids without speaking to their healthcare provider. Now let's discuss another class of drugs, the immunomodulatory drugs or IMIDs. These drugs target the bone marrow microenvironment in a number of ways such as by inhibiting tumor necrosis factor alpha, providing anti-angiogenesis properties, through their inhibition of vascular endothelial growth factors, or VEGF. Approved IMIDs for the treatment of multiple myeloma include lenalidomide, pomalidomide, and thalidomide. Along with proteasome inhibitors, these medications have changed the landscape for multiple myeloma patients beginning in the early 2000s and led to not only enhanced treatment options, but a better quality and quantity life for many myeloma patients. It is important to be aware of the key side effects to monitor. The top three side effects of lenalidomide and palmolidomide include a decrease in blood counts, such as neutropenia or anemia, an increased risk of blood clots, and an increased risk of blood uh, birth defects. All patients who take IMAGE should be at risk stratified to receive either aspirin 81 to 325 milligrams daily, or if at higher risk of blood clots due to inactivity, multi-agent chemotherapy, kidney or liver disease, or with concurrent carfilzomib administration, a direct oral anticoagulant such as apixaban or rivaroxaban should be considered. Liver function studies should be assessed for all IMIDs and patients may require a dose reduction based on liver or kidney function. A long-term side effect unique to lenalidomide is diarrhea, which can occur between 17 to 24 months after the start of the drug. Treatment of lenalidomide-related diarrhea includes supportive care with fluids and antidiarrheal agents such as loperamide or cholestyrene powder. The IMIDs are only available through a risk, evaluation, mitigation strategy, or REMS program because of the potential for human birth defects. Although an older drug, thalidomide is still used today, but most commonly in salvage regimens. Thalidomide is an attractive option as it causes less cytopenias than other IMIDs and was first used as a sedative, so it should be given at nighttime. Other side effects unique to thalidomide include constipation and peripheral neuropathy over time. Therefore, all patients should be monitored for these side effects as well as the increased risk of blood clots already mentioned. Please see the prescribing information for each of the IMIDs. 
Proteasome inhibitors are the third and last class of drugs that we will talk about today and important in the treatment of multiple myeloma at diagnosis and throughout. These drugs are highly effective in combination with other classes of drugs and approved for not only newly diagnosed but also relapsed and refractory myeloma. Now there are three proteasome inhibitors currently approved by the FDA to treat myeloma and include bortezomib, carfilzomib, and exacimib. The proteasome is a multi-subunit enzyme complex that plays a role in the regulation of cell cycle progression and apoptosis or programmed cell death. Proteasome inhibitors block the proteasome from functioning, interfering with and producing conflicting regulatory signals. Now normal cells are less sensitive to than cancer cells to the pro-apoptotic effects of proteasome inhibition and they can recover. But cancer cells cannot, leading to apoptosis or programmed cell death. The proteasome inhibitors target several multiple myeloma microenvironment pathways including the 26S proteasome pathway leading to induction of cell cycle arrest and apoptosis, cellular degradation, and induction of endoplasmic reticulum stress and inhibition of NF-kappa B. Bortezomib is the oldest and most widely studied proteasome inhibitor for myeloma. Common side effects include low blood counts, primarily thrombocytopenia, and increased risk for shingles and bacterial infections, as well as peripheral sensory neuropathy, usually affecting the fingers and toes of patients. The peripheral neuropathy can lead to treatment discontinuations in a number of patients and is particularly worse when given intravenously. Therefore, the current standard of care is to give bortezomib by a subcutaneous route, which lessens the chair time and decreases the incidence of neurotoxicity or peripheral neuropathy. Carfilzomib is an irreversible proteasome inhibitor that is given once or twice weekly alone or in combination with other drugs. Carfilzomib can lead to cytopenias, therefore blood count should be assessed before each dose. Similar to bortezomib, carfilzomib carries an increased risk for herpes virus, therefore prophylaxis with acyclovir or valacyclovir is important. For unclear reasons, carfilzomib can cause an increase in blood pressure levels and possibly lead to heart failure with symptoms or reduced ejection fraction on echocardiogram. Therefore, it's important to know your patient's baseline cardiac and pulmonary status and optimize heart failure and blood pressure management. Diuretics such as furosemide and torsemide and appropriate antihypertensive agents can be safely used to support these patients. Finally, exacimib is an oral proteasome inhibitor approved in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone for patients with relapsed multiple myeloma but is also used in some other clinical studies in newly diagnosed and maintenance settings. Exacimib is administered one capsule per week due to its long half-life on an empty stomach either one hour before or two hours after food. Similar to other proteasome inhibitors, viral prophylaxis with acyclovir or valacyclovir should be given. In a study of patients with relapsed myeloma in combination with lenalidomide and dexamethasone, Exacimib led to rapid responses of 1.1 months in clinical trials. Exacimib also has a fast absorption within 30 minutes. So if patients vomit, do not repeat the dose. Cyclic thrombocytopenia occurs with exacimib as with other proteasome inhibitors and routine CBC monitoring is recommended as with the others. Peripheral neuropathy and peripheral edema can occur but tends to be mild for most. In patients with impaired kidney or liver function, a lower starting dose of exacimib is recommended. Please see the prescribing information for specific recommendations. In this module, we discuss three approved classes of medication used to treat multiple myeloma and important considerations for nurses. For more information, please see these additional resources and join us for other modules where my colleagues and I discuss other topics important for nurses related to the care of patients with myeloma. Thank you.